Hi, my name is Deborah Boyer, and I'm one of the pediatric pulmonary doctors here at the Children's Hospital Boston. Today I'm here to talk to you about cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease that causes the cells in your child's body to have difficulty handling the movement of sodium and chloride. This ultimately ends in the production of some thick, sticky mucus, and it's this thick, sticky mucus that leads to the side effects that we see when children come to our clinic. So the organ most commonly affected in cystic fibrosis would be the lungs. And if you take a closer look at the lungs here, a cross-sectional area, you're going to see what are called the bronchi, or the airways of the lung. And if you take a look at one of these normal airways depicted here, what you're going to see would be uh, a muscular layer and then a big tube where the air passes through. This tube has a thin layer of mucus in a patient who does not have cystic fibrosis. When you look at the airway of a patient with CF, uh, as depicted here, you're going to see some infection or bacterial growth in that airway, and that bacterial growth is going to lead to this thick uh, section of mucus that obviously is going to make it a lot harder for air to flow easily through that airway. Another major concern that we have in children with cystic fibrosis would be their growth. And the reason for this is that about 90% of patients with cystic fibrosis have what we call pancreatic insufficiency. What this means is that the pancreas, located here, is unable to secrete the proper enzymes into the small intestines right here. This then means that your small intestines can't absorb the right nutrients uh, to allow your child to grow properly. There are other organs affected by cystic fibrosis, and these could include uh, sinus disease. And again, this is going to vary in child to child. Other children may have trouble with their liver and have evidence of liver disease. But the one thing I like to emphasize to parents is that the organ that's not affected by cystic fibrosis would be the brain, and your child's going to grow and develop and think just as they would even if they didn't have cystic fibrosis. A common misconception in cystic fibrosis is that patients have an extremely limited lifespan. And that's not exactly true. The average predicted lifespan in a patient with cystic fibrosis is 38 years of age. If you think about it though, those are patients that were born 38 years ago when we had a very limited treatment option available to us. Children born today with cystic fibrosis have a whole variety of treatments that I can offer them that weren't available 38 years ago. Many of these treatment options are the result of a lot of research, many of which we are actively pursuing here at Children's Hospital Boston. Because cystic fibrosis is a lifelong disease, it's critical that you develop a strong relationship with the clinician and the team that's going to help take care of your child. Here at Children's Hospital Boston, we do this every day and we're very comfortable taking care of your child from the school age years through the difficult adolescent years and then as they transition into an adult cystic fibrosis program. So you can be assured that we'll be there for you every step of the way along that process.